is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 90 of the GeekCast. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru. A little different this week, because Toby is not with us, and I have a cluster of a group with me today. <laughs> Lee Navarro of uh, Phoenix Overdrive. What's up, buddy? Hi. Your, your you finally got me on. Your microphone works, too. Holy cow. I know. I, everything is working when it should. That's, that's, when I'm trying to prepare prepare for a podcast, it never works. But when the podcast is finally started, it's like, oh, fine, we'll work for you. <laughs> and uh, we have his lovely wife, Rebecca, here. What's up, Becky? Oh, you know, not much. Just finally actually getting onto somebody else's podcast because you do it at a normal time. This, Yeah, this is true. This is true. And then I got Tom Cruise over here with the aviators. <laughs> what is up, Matthew? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, oh Lord! This, Here he goes. This, this oh is God! Of, this, this is uh, the kind of day I'm having. Okay. Oh Lord! I'm glad. Oh. I am glad that all of that late night sexting has paid off. <laughs> I'm finally on the Nintendo Guru. <laughs> Hell yes! Oh we gonna, Lord! We gonna get sexy up in here. Now you can look at my face while I do it. <laughs> oh, man, what is happening? I need to make some better decisions when it comes to guest. <laughs> All right, so let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. Uh, ladies first, Becky, we'll go to you first. What are you geeking out about right now? Well, currently we're in the process of getting through Iron Fist. I'm probably just stole Lee's too. Um, I have to say all of the, the different Netflix series that have really gotten into the comics has been something that I have found an extreme interest in for somebody who's not been brought up on comics and learning about some of the backstory and some of the different smaller pieces of the the universe Mm -hmm. um it's just absolutely awesome i'm loving the series even though i'm falling asleep you know halfway through an episode because i'm so tired by the end of the day but other than that it's awesome i usually get you know the last half of an episode in and then the first half of the next one and then i'm passing out but you know anyway you're tarantinoing every episode yeah that that's where anything's any good anyway the beginning and the end the rest is just kind of fluff you don't worry about that uh lee what are you geeking out about well she stole mine oh here we go (laughs) So no no, um, no, actually, no 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 I'm not, no I'm not gonna you lie. didn't like, prepare she didn't steal she had hers <laughs> and you no, wanted to steal it no there is there is a there is a geeking out going on in my life right now um mm-hmm. so I am in the process of preparing to upgrade my gaming PC and that means a lot of uh, high end purchases are coming my way oh, and I'm boy. like I'm yeah <laughs> I'm uh, I'm geeking out waiting for the release of Um, the newest set of video cards from NVIDIA coming out this April. So I have to, like, balance trying to figure out, okay, cost versus how well, um, you know, that piece of hardware is going to perform. So every night I'm, like, looking up on YouTube or somewhere else to see, you know, what other new information is coming out. Don't roll your eyes at me like that, woman. (laughs) So, yeah, that's my geek out right now is my graphic card uh, purchase that's coming in April, which is why I haven't bought a Switch yet. She's just jealous that you're so excited about the delivery man's package. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, less work for me. Go for it. Oh, Lord. Matthew uh, Keel, what are you geeking out about? <laughs> um, I am, I, well, I'm always geeking out about music. Uh, um, and this week actually saw the arrival of a special edition of Father John Misty's second album, which I'm excited about. It's like super multicolored and vinyl. It's a really good album. And uh, the guy's one funny songwriter. He sort of he kind of does what Dylan did, but not attempt. He's not like imitating Dylan, mm-hmm. which is cool. Um, also, I've I've been I've been really stressed. <laughs> I've been so uh, I, actually I've been playing a lot of a lot of both Horizon and Zelda. So I've been I've been geeking out about that too. But I'll save that. Save that for what you're playing. There you exactly. go. Uh, myself, I am geeking out about, there's a little trailer going to kick off tomorrow, and I can't wait to see it. So Justice League is actually going to have a trailer for the movie. They've been teasing it for the past couple of days with some little montage stuff, like uh, they did one with The Flash and one with Batman that I've seen so far, and I can't wait to see what they actually put out there. So fingers crossed they knock this one out the park. 
But I'm happy with everything they do, but a lot of people get on them, and, and it is what it is. Um, what we're playing. Matt, we'll start with you. You, you, mentioned, um, you mentioned... Spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm playing Horizon and Zelda. I'm not really playing them both at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not have a Switch because of more well, money. Um, despite it just being money, bruh. Uh, <laughs> I... I've been playing it on Wii U and um, I haven't really, I haven't really decided to just barrel into the game and leave the first area yet, but I'm, it's, it's just such a ball to just run around and yeah. and do stuff in that game. I never, I've never, like I've never wanted to do, I, I'm usually like always trying to just avoid encounters early on until I, until I level up or, mm-hmm. or, you know, avoiding the tedious ones, you yeah. know? Yeah. But this time, like, it seems like there's such a, there's such a like a far cry aspect to the to the combat moment to moment. So uh, I like I like going back to the same areas where the enemies have respawned and then trying to beat them a different way. Mm-hmm. And I still kind of wish I could beat up that broke Santa Claus that's sort of wandering around the first area <laughs> trying to pawn off his paraglider onto you. But you know that's a, that's a that's that's more of me problem. But yeah. um, Horizon is uh, while uh, many it it draws it draws many pedantic comparisons to Zelda. I think mm-hmm. they're very very different, mm-hmm. and I think it, I'm actually getting something vastly different from Horizon. Um, Mainly because it has the open world BS. You know, yeah. you look at the map. It's it, 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 you look at the map. It's peppered with, you know, icons and things to do. And then when you actually do those icons, they don't really disappear. They just turn green. So you're always confused. Like ah, oh, it's just more stuff. Yeah. Uh, but the moment to moment combat in Horizon is actually something to behold. Uh, I'm having. I do. I do like wandering around, beating up metal animals, and then trying to use the metal animals for parts. It's kind of great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm playing. Becky, what are you playing? Well, it's going to be pretty much the same answer that you get on our podcast. Is nothing right now because I'm working on so many different things. But I'm looking to get back into um, <clears throat> Last Guardian mm-hmm. because I started it. Absolutely love the game. It's just that time problem. You know, sitting yeah. down for a couple hours at a time just isn't possible right now. Mm. Um, you know, if you guys have heard me talk on Nerd Overdrive... I've been working on a leadership project. So I've got a lot of things going on on weekends, um, trying to get this done, you know, after work. And any free time that I have is pretty much dedicated to this leadership program I'm in. Um, But also really looking forward to, you know, after I stop buying Lee so many different things for (laughs) his uh, gaming pleasure. um, (laughs) Ghost Recon. Okay. Well, listen, he'll, he'll tell you. He'll tell you what I picked up for him. And it's not that I am saying this out of, I hate doing this for him. I like surprising him randomly with little things. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's 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 one of those things where I'm like, oh, I'll get my games later. Let's get him the brand new shiny at the full price now. <laughs> oh, Lord. You see, I yeah, think I, the, I answer have, to your, to... the answer to your solutions is a Switch. Because if you had a Switch, you could play on lunch breaks and things like that. It'd be amazing. Trust me. Now, mean. let me also tell you with my job, I don't really have always lunch breaks per se. Like today, my lunch was actually a client business meeting. Oh, Lord. So, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's that's, that's the good. industry I'm in. It's it's not exactly a full-blown lunch. And plus, the internet is terrible where I am. So, you yeah, don't need no, the internet to play it. It's just, There's nothing to stream online? Nothing to stream online. You just play. Oh, then I don't have to worry about it's it. Kind of, it's kind of the beauty of it. That's it the really beauty is. of it, man. You just I, I, every day at lunch, I pro, I prop it up tabletop mode on my desk at work, and I start I dive into high roll, and I just play, and it's amazing. You don't well, to... Lee Lee will tell you that he saw one pop up today that was at a decent price, and he almost almost bit the bullet and ordered it. So mm. close. Mm. Lee, what are you playing? Well, I'm playing the uh, I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn as well since my lovely, beautiful, amazing wife bought that for me. <laughs> Not laying two it on days, thick enough. Ugh. Two days I, I received it two days after working a 19-hour shift at work due to winter storm Stella. Oh I got yeah. Stuck at work, and she uh, she goes, 
Well, I got you something. I said, oh, what did you get? Well, it's coming Friday. And then, you know, Friday rolls around after Stella, and there it is, Horizon Zero Dawn, in this nice little frou-frou bag from Amazon. <laughs> so bag. It was, it's just, it, it was a cute little thing. It, whatever, you know. <laughs> so I've been, I, I uh, dove into that really quickly, fell in love with it, really enjoyed it. Um, as Matt said, I love just attacking all these machines and just, you know, scavenging them for parts. Um, I love to, uh, you know, just ride this, just just ride these machines all around the area and just just exploring. I mean, I'm not really diving into much of the story yet. I'm just exploring and yeah. just gathering stuff, looking for stuff, um, doing whatever side quests pop up. So it, it's a ton of fun. It's very different to me. Um, as far as being a console game, uh, so I'm I'm really enjoying it. I uh, I've been playing Zelda. I am going to get Horizon, but I can't even get time on my PlayStation Four right now because my wife is playing Fallout Four. Um, she's trying to be like Chelsea. Good Cap- woman. Yeah, she's trying to be like Chelsea Capri and, and platinum it. So she's been playing it like crazy. And I told her tonight, I was like. I got a podcast between like nine, ten, whatever, and and I like so you're not gonna be able to play, and she's like, that's all right. So we get done eating dinner. She's like, I'm going downstairs, and she went right downstairs, started playing. I'm like, okay, it, it is what it is. But that's she's like in love with it, and so for me, I'm like, I'm gonna get Horizon later. Um, I'll probably get it when it goes on sale or something like that. I my time at right, right now, like I've been playing Zelda. I beat Zelda. I did beat it. Um. But, like, I'm back playing, and I'm just, like, trying to do the shrines and do everything and be, like, as much of the completions as I can with it. But game is so good, man. And it's, like, the more I play, the more I see stuff, the more I do stuff. It's, like, it's amazing how the world just kind of works in that game. And little things. Like, there was complaints earlier when the game first came out. Like, oh, the, the world doesn't interact with itself. And then videos pop up of, like, people making a guardian and a rock creature fight each other and stuff. And it's like, this yep. is awesome, man. It's like, the world is just, it's like they took, it's like Nintendo's been sitting back for 15 years doing nothing and and just watching what everybody else is doing. And now it's like, okay, now we're going to throw our hat into the ring and make an open world game. And this is what we do. And it's like, wow. Like, they just crushed it, I think. So, um, let's, uh... I didn't even bring up the website. That would kind of help. Wouldn't it? I just want to <laughs> pop into the Nintendo Guru Facebook group real quick. We go through a couple of the topics and uh, or just see what people are talking about and see what's like leading the ranks per se. Um, here you go, Matthew. Uh, Matt South is talking about he just bought Near um, for PS4. Have you guys messed with this or seen anything about this game? Or are you guys interested in this game? I, I have it. it. I haven't. I haven't touched it yet because Horizon. Like yeah. I just. I mean, There's, it's. I'm. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Yeah. 2017 is just so full of games so far that's just gonna like suck you right in. And I feel like, okay, I'm gonna buy this game, that game, this game, that game. When I when am I gonna have the time to play any of these games right now with me focusing on one game at a time? So I figure, you know, if if there's something out there that I want to play, like I still haven't played Neo. Yeah. Um, Matt is looking at me with shame because I haven't played Bloodborne <laughs> yet with him, and he's still like he's he's so salty about it with me. You do you, Zelda. Boo. <laughs> Zelda, Zelda is still, and Zelda is a, it's a purchase that I'm gonna wait for with the Switch. Yeah. Um, that's something that I I want to play in the Switch, which is something that Becky and I have talked about purchasing um, sometime in the middle of the summer, mm-hmm. um, after the kids' birthday parties. So, yeah. um, you know, we're 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 definitely gonna invest in one, and it's uh, it's something that we're both excited to play. And me personally, like I said, I'm excited to play Zelda on there. So, I mean, but near it's just there's just another potentially great game that's that's out there for this year. Um, Mass Effect just came out not too long ago. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's still yeah. just so many different games that I'm interested in, but and then there's other games that I want to go back to. Yeah. So it's like where what where do I have the time? So uh, um, it's it's the uh... yeah, Near wasn't exactly one of those on top of my list. It was more Neo. And I know when we talked about those I kept getting them reversed. But Near is not 
Um, honestly, for the style and everything, it's not my thing. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not really a fan as much of those type of the Japanese games. I, I think really my biggest one was like Blaze Blue as far as that style, like yeah. that art style. But that was about it. Yeah. Um, the next one, next post comes from me, actually. It's uh, just talking about the Global Test Fire today. I snuck off in the middle of the afternoon for a few minutes and played a couple of matches on Splatoon 2 on the Global Test Fire. And it's, man, it's just more of the goodness that I loved with the original Splatoon. Um, I tried out the dual uh, dual weapons, the, the, the two guns, and um, just really awesome. It, it's amazing how that game, like, I was expecting to play differently. Because, you know, I'm used to the gamepad and stuff. And maybe because I was playing handheld mode, maybe that's what made me feel like I really wasn't playing much difference between because, you know, with the gamepad and being so big. So I'm interested tonight to play and play with the game with the pro controller and see how that feel goes. But, like, just really fluid. And, and it looks phenomenal. It really does. It looks really good. So, um... I'm jealous. I, yeah. I, I mean, I love Splatoon. Splatoon is so good. So, oh man, and like, oh, it's, like I don't care. You know, we get to talk about the Wii U being a, a failed console, but some of there were there were games on the Wii U that kind of like Splatoon. I think sort of is a standard bearer for for shooters. Yeah. In a way, I think, I mean, I think, you know, Mario Maker is one of the probably 20 most important games ever yeah. already. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it splits. I, I like once that comes out, once Mario Odyssey comes out and, you know, I'm, I'm also hearing about a, a mana collection. Um, oh, all of yeah. a sudden, all of a sudden the switch is looking like there are there are games there for me to for me to play yeah. more than just Zelda and I yeah. was not I just wasn't going to play I wasn't going to shell out the the price for uh, uh, one game but based on the replayability of Zelda I'll probably buy it on Switch and play yeah. again yeah I when I when I looked at Switch and I saw what was coming out year 1 from Nintendo I was like look I'm getting five solid titles from Nintendo I can't ask for much more from a, a year one from Nintendo. I'm happy with that. I know other people will make games. I'm fine with that. And I went with it. And I said, I'm going to I'm gonna buy it regardless. I'm getting it. So I got it. And then the minute after, like, what was it, a month after, they, they do the Nindies reel. And they show off all these phenomenal games coming. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is awesome. And then all of a sudden, all this other stuff starts coming up. And it's like, like you said, if that, if that Secret of Mana collection comes... To the, well, and here's the thing: Does it really even have? To, I mean, role playing games. I would think you would have to need, but in, in to be English, so I can understand what the hell's going on. But it's it's region free, so I don't have to worry about. It. Like I could legitimately buy it and play it again. That's the nice thing about this. Like I could play any game I want, and I don't have to even think about it. And that's that's a new realm for me to think like I could start playing Japanese games and not even think about it. You know, and it's so yeah. that's that's kind of kind of nice about it um let's you know because we're kind of tipping or tiptoeing around let's jump into the first topic and and that's so zelda was originally supposed to hit in the fall of 2015 um but it, it got delayed numerous times it got pushed back to march 2017 if now obviously at that point the zelda that we got now isn't the zelda but let's just say hypothetically it did push through, or maybe it did have a lot of stuff, and a lot of stuff was just tweaking, or maybe what a lot of rumors thought and a lot of people felt was they were just holding it for Switch, and they just held it over. But let's say that Zelda does launch on the Wii U in 2015, as as originally asked or, or promised. Do you think that the rave reviews that we're getting now, that saves the Wii U? Or do you think the Wii U still falls apart and then we're, they move along? You know, I think that's really a double-edged sword because of some of the issues that the Wii U had. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one of the biggest ones that I know I've experienced, especially because it's my son's console, really, in reality, even though we tend to play it and I usually steal it away to the bedroom because there's still connectivity there, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) is really the gamepad connection. You know, not being able to go that far away um, 
or even when you're sitting on the couch right in front of it, cause some issues that it seems like right now the Switch is not having. Yeah. Um, so that really ruins some of the, the game play for certain games. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially with a game like Zelda that you probably are able to sit there for hours upon hours on end without having to worry about some of those things. I don't think that it would have necessarily saved the Wii U just because of not only the gamepad connection, but some of the software issues I'm noticing with the freezing and the glitching. And, you know, especially if you're in the middle of an open world, Mm -hmm. like Zelda is currently saying Mm -hmm. that it's exactly how it was back then, would have caused a big issue. Yeah. Personally. So it's a yes and no. I think with the fandom, sure, it could have saved it a little bit more or people could have been like, you know, I just can't deal with this system with this game because it's not giving me the ability to really enjoy it and play it because my gamepad keeps disconnecting, the software keeps freezing, and it's just ruining it for me. What do you think, Matt? Um, I actually want to hear Lee's opinion. Okay. Man, because I mean, because I, I think I'm going to take this topic to sort of go on a bit of a rant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Lee. Not like, not like an anger. <laughs> but like, I, I, I just... Yeah. I have like I when I saw this I'm like oh crap like the ammo just started piling up yeah, so yeah. I want I want to hear yeah. what Lee has to say. Yeah, like, all of a sudden my heart started racing <laughs> after you like threw it right back to me. Here. Um, <laughs> I wish I could say that yeah it would have saved the Wii U because I saw the appeal of the Wii U, I saw what it could have done for gaming and I think technically speaking Nintendo could have done better creating the hardware for it. Hmm. Um. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves with it is the reliability of the gamepad on your Wi-Fi network. And even then, there is still that limited distance. The same issue as Becky was saying. There's still that limited distance that you still that you had to adhere to with the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if I was able to take the Wii U anywhere around my house, as long as it's connected to the Wi-Fi, that'd be great. Yeah, I would. I would have loved to have been able to do that. But as it stood, I was just limited to the couch yeah. and like right outside by um, right, right outside of my porch. But that was really it. Yeah. So I don't know if it would have saved it. I personally, there, there was a lot more to the Wii U that, um, that needed improving. And as a game, Zelda, Zelda, I, from what I, I've been hearing out there is it performs well enough on the Wii U, but there seems to be, a little bit of um, a difference between the Wii U and the Switch editions mm-hmm. in terms of uh, playability. Um, some people experiencing, some people are experiencing um, dropping of frame rates and just just glitchiness and just lagginess overall between the, with the Wii U edition. So, um, no, I, I'm going to have to go with the uh, no. I don't think it would have saved the Wii U. I think it would have prolonged the life of the Wii U a little mm-hmm. bit longer than than the Nintendo had uh, had done with it, but I don't see it surviving past uh, you know this year to be honest. After if uh, you know if they did release uh, uh, Zelda on it. Okay. Okay, Matt. <laughs> what, what do you think? Well, I'm I so think, nervous. I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this unequivocally. I have not played very much of Zelda, but already I think it's a masterpiece. Okay. Already I think there is enough there that represents why I love video games. That this, I can already feel that this is probably going to be a very special experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, put that to one side now. Zelda coming out in 2015 for the Wii U does not save the Wii U. Okay. For the simple fact that by the time 2015 rolled around, people were already like, okay, the Wii U is the Wii. I mean, the Wii U, even when they revealed what it really was, you already saw the misstep coming. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Wii U was sort of detailed in that before it had really even before pre-orders had really happened, I was excited. But then I started to think about it. Okay. We have that, and the iPad is around. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact Nintendo's gamepad is not going to be as robust as that. Now, on on both of my shows, Platinum Achievement Podcast and NGR Radio, we've all taken jibes at the Wii U at the fact that you can't play 
you know, Mario Kart or Mario Maker on the crapper if your crapper is too far away for you. <laughs> you. That's just the kind of that's just the kind of I'm I'm you know I'm 37 yeah. and I definitely have a 15 year old sense of humor, um. But this is why Zelda saves Nintendo as a whole. <laughs> it's a launch. It's a launch game for a system that the minute people saw what the system was before they knew really what Zelda was, they were looking at, they were looking at this and going, wow, that's really cool. But why is that girl bringing her switch to a roof deck party? Clearly, you know, she spent, she spends too much time playing video games. That joke, the fact that it's about the character in the ad rather than the system is a state. Because all automatically people are people are are paying attention to the character in an ad rather than a quote unquote gimmick that mm -hmm. Nintendo has done again. Yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo kind of in a microcosm with what it's done with Zelda, looking at the game industry for, for the past decade and a half. It looked at. I mean, you have to. You have to logically think. Nintendo looked at the PlayStation Vita and said, "We can double down on that that idea." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, ultimately, that, you know, when you look at the Vita and you look at what the PS4 was, that was the promise. What what the Switch is was the promise that PlayStation gave to players. You could take your AAA games and play it, take them on the go and play. But the problem with that was the fact that you had to connect to the PlayStation 4 in order for it to work. And if you didn't have a solid it, Wi-Fi, it wasn't happening. Exactly. Well, and, and and now no 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 hang on. Hey before I don't want I don't want too many voices to get involved, Becky. I apologize. <laughs> I will forget what I'm going to say. Um but because this game is basically a new Super Mario 64 mm -hmm. where all of a sudden bound you you literally see boundaries being pushed possibly broken as you're playing the game if you if you think about it in that term like this this game in itself is proof that not only Nintendo ain't dead but it's proof that Nintendo is watching and listening and waiting mm -hmm to make their move yeah. and this and it also it i mean in a weird way it reaffirms me as a nintendo fan mm -hmm. because i've you know i was there throughout the week going man but nintendo is so good why is it this you know and then the wii u nintendo is so good why is it this and then you know you have mario maker and bayonetta 2 nintendo is so good see mm -hmm. see you know and but but you know the the game industry at large goes no, because those are cartoons. They don't look like humans. And we're not going to think about gameplay because I want to see my, I want to see, you know, real human like people mm -hmm. doing real human like stuff rather than Captain Olimar or Mario Kart or, or whatever. Yeah. And <clears throat> Zelda is, Breath of the Wild specifically is an argument against all of that garbage and the fact that it is a launch game yeah like i think i think whoever said hey let's launch our new system with zelda we'll still put it on wii u because th those people need something yeah. people like matt need something <laughs> um but this is this is how this is how we show them and and i think that if we, if Zelda Breath of the Wild comes out in 2015, you have, and I'm just going to throw out, you, you have the Nintendo evangelists on NVC at IGN going, oh, but Zelda's so great, but Zelda's so great. And then but like people are like, but it's on the Wii U. I can't play it on the crapper. What am I doing? And um, that's the thing. Like I like I agree with Lee on some respect where I feel like it it expand, it extends the life of the Wii U because I feel like. If it pulls the numbers, it's pulling the tens and the nines and all that stuff. And people love Zelda because when that trailer released, 
people went out and bought Wii U's. That was enough to move the gauge to get people to go white buy Wii U's. I feel like if the game comes out in 2015, more people go buy Wii U's, and then it starts a groundswell a little bit, I feel, and it just extends it. But I don't feel like it saves the Wii U, because I feel like the Wii U was already starting that. That In 2015 is when the decline really started, in terms of, like, they they weren't getting third-party support. And, I, and, and ultimately, the big picture is is that the system was hurting after the first year. That was when yeah. it really started to take a, a hit. The games were phenomenal. There's no argument that the games on the Wii U were great games. The problem, in a nutshell, was the distance between those games that that hurt it. And as much as I love Zelda, and I think like it's it's a masterpiece, I don't think that it was it is enough to save the Wii U. I just think it extends the life a little bit longer. For Nintendo, it sells a couple more units. But I think ultimately, that's what Nintendo was looking at too, in terms of, we need something to move these systems. These systems aren't selling. And I think that's why we didn't get a Metroid, and that's why we didn't get other games, is because the consoles weren't moving. You look at now, with what it's doing with Switch, and it's moving consoles. And it's it's crazy to think that, like, when they launched and they said, we got five games coming at launch, and everybody jumped on them and gave them a hard time about that. Ray Osario, I'm looking right at you, buddy. Myself and- <laughs> included, man. I'll, 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 I, will, I will raise my hand. Yes, I did. And I said, and I was in your chat room that day, and I'm like, they have Zelda. They have Zelda. That's all they need. They, they built an E3 around it. That's all they need. And you talk to anybody that owns a Switch right now, and that's all they're playing. So it's like, however, but see now, however, mm-hmm. however, I need. I'm sorry to be disrespectful and interrupt you, <laughs> but you, you also have to remember. You, it's easy to say they have Zelda now. I was saying it then, but, but before Zelda, the last Zelda we got was Skyward Sword. Well, yeah, I, I but mean, I don't think that, that anybody talk- in their right mind in in. Nobody was calling the Skyward Sword 2.0. Like, this was a breaking no, of the chains and, and releasing and going. And it was it was a promise of something totally different. And we saw that. We saw where that was going and, and, and the direction it was going. So, I feel like I was saying at the time, like, look it. You have Zelda. You'll get Mario Kart in April. You get all these other things coming down the pipeline. I felt like I looked at it like this. Twofold. One, this console is going to be hard to get. I want it day one because I don't want to have to wait. We had we bought two, one for me, one for my wife. And the whole reason we bought the second one was because like if we don't get it day one, you you're going to have a hard time getting it. it. Yeah, you're just in case. Yeah. It. yeah, I knew I was going to be happy with it. And now that I have it, I'm like, I have five, six games on the Switch that I have not touched. I touched them. For two seconds. Did you put them in your mouth and how did they taste? Oh, they're nasty. They're foul. <laughs> I did do that. I think the fact that people are actually trying to taste the Wii U cartridges, or, I'm sorry, the Switch cartridges. Yeah. Wow. To where, I'm, to where my mind is stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, shows you, it shows you where we are as a society. Exactly. Don't do this. And like idiots, we all do it anyway. And it's like, oh, try it. <laughs> let's try it anyway. I, I said the one day, I was like, 10 years from now, we're all going to have like some weird tongue cancer from this thing. I, because... can't, I can't wait to get a, get a switch because they're on cartridges. I'm going to blow on them. Oh, Just good kidding. God. <laughs> but you know what? I, I do want to say the point that was brought up as far as the, you know, Nintendo watching what other people were doing. The failed Vita. The failed Vita completely yes. failed. Is mm. it, really, yes, it's really, failed. it's failed. you try playing it at your kid's soccer game, trying to connect to the PS4. It doesn't work so well. Yeah. It was, I'm sorry, it was a piece of crap. Well, why, why are you doing that? I mean, <laughs> duh. Well, because... I'm sorry, soccer practice, not game, because during practice, nothing matters. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, all I know is with it, with or without the internet, Spelunky still works. Just saying. That's yeah. I was not. Oh. Don't I was not a you. fan. You know what? Shut up, Lee. Um, but <laughs> what Nintendo was doing is absolutely just knocking what PlayStation thought they were doing out of the park. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you're getting the full experience. You're not yeah. sitting there having to wait for certain things to be released to the Vita, yeah. which somehow is still getting trickle-down games that are, you know, here and there. But yeah. they're doing what 
PlayStation should have done to begin with, and they're doing it better. I, and I think ultimately that was, again, but the promise from PlayStation was never, the remote play came along, but ultimately I think the remote play came along because they wanted to be a gamepad. That was, if you remember, that's when that whole thing came about, when they saw what Nintendo was doing with the gamepad, and they were like, hey, we can do that better. So we're going to introduce the Vita, and guess what? Now you can do the same thing that they're doing with their stuff, and it turned out to just not be the way people wanted to play their their game, so it didn't work that way. Um, well, I'm going to stop you right there. It wasn't it wasn't the fact that it wasn't the way people wanted to play their games because I because re- you're onto something there. However, mm-hmm. it was so it wasn't it wasn't consistent at all. Yeah, it wasn't fluid. Like, it was just it, it was just all of a all of a sudden some games cross saved like spreading butter over bread yeah. and then some of them you had to actually do some nebulous bs to get them to work yeah and you know and the fact and the fact that you couldn't just cross stuff over all of a sudden it was just like nope all right i'm not i know exactly what this is i'm not doing it anymore yeah now granted i like i love my vita but the flaws are there yeah. i can't i can't argue that um okay with E3, people ha- are making a big thing right now about uh, the size of Xbox's booth and how it's not big and it, they scaled it way back. And is this a, t- a sign that Xbox is failing and all these different things are coming out? What do you think it says? Because in the past, I mean, obviously, and they also moved their date. You know, they move their data, their their presentation, which I think is a smart move. They always, like, they come out in the morning, and then Sony just comes out after them, and, and it's just, like, kicking their butt right now. Um, do you think this is just them just trying to recoup and rebound? Like, what what's your mindset when you heard this coming through? Um, Lee, let me throw it to you this time first. What do you think? Well, see, the thing that uh, Phil Spencer mentioned, I think was that they were doing it as a service to the public because this is the first year that E3 will be open to the public Mm -hmm. um, the way it is. And maybe this is a hint more towards what Microsoft is planning to do, which is to allow people to play games at their booth on their console, whether it's Scorpio, whether it's on the Xbox One S, um, you know, whichever iteration it is that they're planning to really put out there at the forefront, this could be a this could be a, a, a hint towards okay, we've got a lot of games coming your way. Come check them out right here at our booth, which is more like I said, it's it's more as a service to all their fans than anything. Mm-hmm. I hope I hope Microsoft can do something to establish itself again as a competitor for this generation let's face it they've they've been outsold and outclassed by sony mm-hmm. in every way which way possible when it comes to games and that's all that matters is it doesn't matter about the hardware the hardware can be whatever as long as your games are fun people are going to enjoy it so like i said maybe this is just a way for them to say hey we've got a lot of games coming uh, come check us out at our booth at E3 and, and see what we have to offer. It's, it's, I think it's amazing, and it shows if you make a false step in the video game industry, it can really hurt you long term. Like, this all stems from them just coming out wrong in their E3 presentation a couple years ago. And saying, you know, the whole DRM thing, and, and you know, we're not going to use physical games and all this stuff, and it's like, and Sony was going to do the same thing. I don't care what anybody says at all. The games download directly to the hard drive of a PS4. They, It was built to do the same thing. I don't care what anybody says. I think Sony had two game plans going in. One was, let's wait and see what Microsoft does. If it goes good, we go this way and follow suit. And if it goes bad, we shift and go. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot tell me otherwise, because when the consoles do the same thing, it, they were set and ready to go do the same thing. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But it shows that that one mistake by Microsoft has hurt them so badly in building back the confidence. Because 
you watch the E3 presentations over the past couple of years, and I feel like Microsoft does a better job in terms of talking directly to the fans and telling them that what they want to hear. Like, there's nobody better than Phil Spencer on that stage, I feel. The dude crushes it. And to think that he can't turn, he can't write this ship is just crazy. And it just blows my mind. I mean, here's, if Microsoft came out and said, we have Final Fantasy VII Remake coming, and it's not coming for three years, people would lose their minds. Sony does it, and it's like, eh, okay, no big deal, we just move along. You know, it, it just, it, I don't understand what Microsoft needs to do to restore that faith. Because they were right there, neck, I mean, they were beating Sony when it came to the 360 PS3 generation. They beat them. I mean, it, ultimately, that was the end game. They, they beat them. But it was just amazing that that one mistake hurt them. Um, I don't feel like this is a sign of anything. I think it's... Moving, moving the show gives them a little bit of space, a little bit of freedom, I think. And it allows them to have more of the focus on them as opposed to, you know, the day after. It gives them more time because pretty much they, they do their presentation. They have a couple hours. Sony comes out and it's like you're sharing the spotlight. And I think they look at what Nintendo does where Nintendo kind of has their own day as well just before the, the, the show opens. They kick off the show to some extent, and I think they look at it and go, "Hey!" And they look at what Bethesda did too, moving. You know, they're a day ahead too, and I think they look at it and go, "This is probably a better move for us to go there." But I think people are reading a little bit too much into it overall. Um, Matt, what are you? What are you thinking? People reading too much into it? Never. <laughs> this is true. Um, I actually agree with everything you just said about. Sony, I think, I think literally Sony saw the the storm coming and they just pivoted and went the other way. Yeah. Um, and I, I also, but see the thing about it wasn't just what Microsoft said. Mm-hmm. It was, in a way, it's how they said it mm-hmm. because you know there was it was packaged in a way that, especially with a with with Don Matrick, he was like, you know what backwards compatibility is backwards or might I introduce you to the 360 or you know and then and then there was that and then Adam Orth he was just deal with it yeah and you know they're they're having worked in retail for more than a decade if it doesn't matter what a clerk does in a store Mm -hmm. unless they really sort of attack some attack a customer personally Mm -hmm. But if a company has any sort of gesture or or even action towards not caring who gives them money, all of a sudden people are like, don't need to give you money then. If you don't care if I'm giving you money, I don't need to give you my money. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what Xbox is working against. Yeah. Now, I love Phil Spencer. Yeah. I, I literally look at him – emceeing those i think they're i think xbox conferences are kind of terrible but he is he is the gamer's eye of a terrible hurricane and Mm -hmm. it sucks but despite having him you know i think the abba song says it best so when you're near me darling can't you hear me sos like that's what xbox is trying to do Yes, Lee, I just did that. You can react <laughs> all you want. Um, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, what do you, what, what's your, because of all of us, you're the one that's prepared for this. So hit us with something good. Come on. <laughs> so I'm just going to start this off with size doesn't matter. <laughs> just going to put that out there. Size doesn't matter. Um, but you know what? Sister, <laughs> working with what I got. Oh, wait, no, we're talking about something else. <laughs> So, I mean, as far as exactly what they're doing, the reasoning behind it is because they have the general public coming in. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you really think about it, this has been an expo where it's all of the gaming media and the people who get the special passes to come in. When you think of an expo that the public is going to come into, you want to have a different setup. It's not just a bunch of people going around with notepads going, okay, that's nice. All right, next, what do you have to show us? 
Yeah. It's people who are actually fans of it. They are focusing on their fans. They're trying to make sure that there's enough room for the 15,000 members of the public that they're anticipating coming through here. And they're trying to make it friendly for the public. So what they're really making the statement of that people really need to realize rather than, you know, complaining about the fact that, oh, they're doing something different. God forbid we challenge the normal way that things are Mm. is they're making it more friendly for their fans or their potential consumers. And they're focusing on the consumers more than the fact that E3 is typically, you know, an investor's type of convention. Yeah. So people, I think, need to get past the fact that they're moving their space to a different area. Well, you need more space when you've got that many people. Yep. If anyone has ever been to PAX, for instance, it is a mob scene. And they've got four different ones, four different versions of PAX. And yeah. it's always a mob scene no matter what area of the country you're in and looking at how they set up their booths and, you know, all the different areas, they make it friendly for the general public to come through, Mm -hmm. not necessarily just investors. Yeah. So so also moving the conference to a different time, what Phil Spencer had mentioned when he had been asked about this is the fact that they have always been respectful as far as the time allotted. They've always felt like they've had to stick to this time and God forbid for once they're at the end of the day and they run over a little bit because of the excitement and the hype potentially over project Scorpio, which they are anticipating to be better than Xbox one as far as presentation. You know, they want to have that extra little bit of wiggle room because you know, the crowd is going to be absolutely going wild for this. If it lives up to the expectations that they are puffing it up to be. So really just to wrap it all up, they're doing it for the general public. They're doing it for their fans. They're not doing it for the investors. And people have to realize what it takes to get an additional 15,000 yeah. people to come through those doors and really get their hands on their products. Yes, I agree. I agree. Speaking of E3, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. We're going we're gonna to finish this up real quick. Um, it, it's not far away. And with that said... What is one thing that you hope gets announced at E3 that'll get you super excited or or really happy with everything? Um, Becky, we'll you wrapped up. We'll we'll start with you this time. Um, you know, I had like four different things written down here, <laughs> but if I really, had, I know, like I said, I was prepared, so maybe I'll throw my notes over to Lee. Um, <laughs> One of my big things was, honestly, a game that I've been anticipating. We saw it at E3 in 2016, um, but it's supposed to be released in 2017. It's a game called Vampire by Don't Nod. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how far they have come since last year, because some of the trailers that I've seen that are on their website, they don't have a full website yet. It's going to be launched soon. Um, But it just absolutely looks like an amazing role-playing game. type of series with a little bit of you know a horror type twist but vampires are a different story they're not zombies um <laughs> thank god <laughs> no kidding so i i really want to see where they've come when the game's going to release and exactly how it's going to look because it's going to be for ps um ps4 xbox and also pc and i'm tr- trying to debate which one i want to get it on nice matt what's the one thing that'll get you hyped up Two things, actually. I, I said one. See... Come on, you're not going to be like well, Toby. I, one I, thing. I break, I break <laughs> rules, man. This is what I do. This is what I do. Um, and, and But see, actually, it'll be quicker. Uh, from Software's next project, I would like an announcement there. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see what Sucker Punch is doing. It's two good things. Don't. Yeah, I'm with you on that. They're, they're good. Lee. Till my dying day, I will always say this. Every year before E3 comes out, Half Life Three. Half Life Three. Oh Jesus! Till my dying day. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I will never give up the dream. Oh. I will never give up the dream. Give it up. But Becky, all... Becky, hey Becky, Becky, just put him out of his misery. <laughs> put him out of his misery. But... Hold on, I need to get more life insurance first. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Double indemnify that. Good. <laughs> but really though. I want to see an announcement from Nintendo mm. for a Metroid game. That'd be good. It is about time that we get a current time yeah. frame Metroid. Becky, 
put him out of his misery. I, I oh think you God. know what? I disagree. I think I think this is the year we hear something about Metroid. I think I hope so. I I'm think ready. Even it won't be this year. It won't be next year. But they're going to announce. They're going to make. I think they're going to pull that Sony move where they announce it. It may not be for a couple of years, but this is what we're going to do. I really think they know that they have to win more hardcore fans over. So and they come out with a prime game for Switch. People are going to lose their minds. So I will. I will buy two switches. For that. <laughs> no, you're buying two switches because I want Sonic. Oh, good oh, God. God! Oh my God! Listen, oh. if Sonic can make course, a comeback, they can make you know Metroid. Sonic. My head's about to blow Ugh. up. My head's about to explode. I'm, I'm dead. I'm oh, dead. good I'm God! Old. Well, see now, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I, as much as I, Metroid was one of the first four games I ever got for my original, my original NES, mm-hmm. and. It is a, it is a, it is this, the franchise is something I love with all of my heart. However, mm-hmm. if Nintendo has a Metroid in development for the Switch, they can't present it the same way they presented Smash Brothers for the Wii U, where they were they were talking about it and you saw diagrams on a on a cocktail napkin. No, I don't think we'll go that route, but I think. They'll show something, and they'll announce that it's coming, and I think they'll let it go. Even if it's, I hope it's a little bit more than just a logo. I hope they do something like a little teaser trailer would be awesome. You know of what they have so far. Just it, all, what you did with Zelda. You know what I mean? Like you just show it and let it simmer in people's minds. It'll blow their minds, and you're good to go. Uh, myself personally, I just if they announce. Mother 3 finally gets translated and comes to the United States. I will lose my mind. Um, I'm a huge Earthbound fan. Um, I love the Mother series. So for me, I just I, I want this game. I'm tired of Emily Rogers teasing me on Twitter, telling me that it's coming, and it just never comes. So I'm hoping that she's finally right for once, and it actually hits. Um but what we'll if they things. mu? What if they went one better and said Mother 4? I would lose my mind. I would lose my mind because I, I would love that. That would be, you know, because obviously if four is coming, then three's got to be coming too. You know what I mean? Um, but I would love. But the, the problem is, is Etoy has already said like he doesn't want to do it anymore. He's basically looked at it and he's likened it to an, to the Beatles. <laughs> It's like you get three good albums and then the rest is kind of, eh, you know, and he's like, that's all, all music. He's like, after about the, th- I, I know, but that's what he said. He said like, the you Beatles know, had like seven good albums. Well, he made great albums. You know what I mean? Like the, he said, you know, most bands have three really good albums and then they start to fall off. And he's like, we did our three. It's time for hey, me to walk look, away. Talking about, talking about most bands don't invoke the Beatles. <laughs> that's unfair. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. I'm not, you know, hey, man, I'm, I'm, it is what it is. Um, yeah. It's like how Lee feels about the Backstreet Boys. After the first uh, three albums, it wasn't so good. Actually, wow. Yeah, we're wow. going to throw that out here right now tonight. <laughs> we're going to go on another show, and we're going to throw down like that. Okay. You know what? Back you know what's messed up, Lee? Up his heart. I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. When I initially put the invite out, I invited Matt and Lee. And Lee came and was like, you want me to, I've been meaning to ask you, let's bring Becky on to it. Are you regretting that decision now, Lee? <laughs> Bobby froze. You, you froze. Well, I froze? And, and then he said, yeah, let's make sure Matt thinks it's okay. Like, I'm going to have a problem. Well, I'm just, I, listen, I'm just, I, I don't know. No. All, all Becky is 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 a part for is a partner for me to bust on Lee. That's what I'm, trust. Me. Well, that's <laughs> it's true. Well, why did you, you do this to yourself, Lee? You should have just been like, you, because I know those two love podcasting <laughs> with each other. I was like, you know what, this could be fun. And the thing is, like when the three when you know Matt came up here to upstate New York to join mm-hmm. us for Extra Life this past year, yeah. it was just so much fun that we we're like, yeah, come on, you know, why not? That's funny, Bobby. Bobby, I don't yes. want to blow your mind. I've seen Lee topless. Ugh, I'm so jealous. You, right you know what? It would also <laughs> blind you besides blow your mind, so don't worry about it. This is why I wear these glasses. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Just wait till this year, Keel. Just wait uh, till this year. Uh, oh, man. That is I'm, all. I'm, Thank I'm, you guys for I'm, listening to us. iTunes, my dad, Lee. I, I'm, SoundCloud, I'm, 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 I'm already Stitcher. Watching us on YouTube. 
Matt is. I was warned about Matt, and and it's coming to fruition. <laughs> so, Matt, tell everybody where they can check you out and all that good stuff. How they can follow you and 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 find you and and all that stuff. You can find me on Facebook Messenger texting Bobby, Bobby Pauls at weird <laughs> hours of the evening. <laughs> um, this is true. <laughs> yes, this is true. No, um, you can find me on uh, NGR Radio as well as the Platinum Achievement Podcast. I've also been I've been attempting to write more about music because I know more about that than I do video games. But uh, I've been doing that at ngrradio.com. Um, I have a bunch of reviews I actually have started but not finished. That's my life. Uh, and you can find me on PS4 at infinite underscore re- rewind, Wii U at infinite underscore rewind, and Instagram at infinite underscore rewind. I'm also on other social media platforms, but I don't use them as much. So there okay. you go. Becky, where can people find you? You know, I'm going to let Lee take our uh, whole entire spiel away because we are so many places for Nerd Overdrive. Um, But on PlayStation, you can find me as Wonderkind, German spelt way, W-U-N-D-E-R-K-I-N-D-4. I believe that's the same thing for Xbox, if I recall correctly, but usually I play on my PC, so good luck with that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I have a battle net as well, but good luck on remembering that because of all the numbers and hashes that they throw into that. Oh, so no. find me on Facebook in the Phoenix Overdrive Nation. Send me a message if you really want to play with me, and we'll go from there. Lee. Well, my name is Lee Navarro, and I am one-third of the triumvirate that is Nerd Overdrive, Phoenix Overdrive's official gaming podcast, featuring her <laughs> and Ray Osorio. Uh, you can find us on YouTube or SoundCloud or iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play Music. Pick your poison. Uh, just search for Nerd Overdrive. You can also check us out on social media. You can uh, find us facebook.com slash Phoenix Overdrive or join our community page at facebook.com slash groups slash PO Nation where we discuss all the latest news and share all things nerd. He's got like this whole spiel, man. He is like the professional. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's I've even seen his. That, I've seen usually. his setup. He's got like four screens, and that is pasted on one of them at all times. That is awesome. Uh, you can follow this podcast at the underscore geekcast pod. That is all. See me later. You guys can say goodbye. What the hell? Oh, bye. <laughs> later. Later, <laughs> Anna, and out. <laughs>